Perseverance has left the floor of Jezero Crater for the final time, retracing the path it first made onto the delta nine months ago. The tracks it left behind provide a preview of how long the first boot prints on Mars may last. On this episode of Mars Guy, Perseverance landed on the floor of Jezero Crater nearly two years ago, steered by its hazard avoidance system away from rugged terrain, but also away from the ancient delta deposits that drew it there. It spent the first year exploring and sampling this terrain before taking a long journey around it to get to the delta. During the second year, Perseverance explored and sampled rocks at the front of the delta and dropped off half of its twinned samples in a depot for two future sample recovery helicopters to pick up just in case it can't make it to the sample return rocket itself. Over the past 11 Martian days, or SALs, Perseverance has followed a route back onto the delta that it first used in May of this year, then again more than three months later as it departed to pursue other rocks on the delta front. This qualifies it as a well-traveled path for a planet with so few travelers. Here's Mars Guy for scale and to represent future Mars travelers. For now, the disturbance made by robotic travelers, whether or not they're intended for science, are usually instructive. In this case, we can learn something about the role of wind and dust over known time periods. There are three sets of tracks here, the first made during the first inbound traverse to the delta, the second during the outbound traverse, and the third set going inbound again. It's notable how little changed they are, demonstrating the limited wind activity and dust deposition during the winter season in Jezero Crater. But we know that dust devils and gusty winds occur during late spring and summer, as documented by Perseverance earlier in the mission. And we know from the Spirit Rover in Gusev Crater that global dust storm activity can wipe out tracks in a few weeks or less. So wheel tracks made by Perseverance may not last through the coming summer, but almost certainly they'll be gone by the next one thanks to wind activity. And unlike boot prints on the moon where there is no wind, the ones that someday will be made on Mars are likely to be erased after a year or two. Perseverance climbed up onto the lowest deposits of the delta, gaining about 20 meters of elevation above the depot and providing a nice look back at its path through the field of mega ripples. Up ahead at about the same elevation is the place where it sampled mudstones containing organic matter, see episode 76, and the rocky top feature explored by Ingenuity, see episode 96. Behind it is the outbound path followed by Perseverance in late August, which includes the aftermath of a literal run-in with a Martian speed bump. Here's the view from below on the current inbound drive. Perseverance was coming at us when it hit a small boulder traveling at the blistering pace of a Galapagos tortoise, or more accurately, 4.2 centimeters per second. It appears to have flipped this rock forward, creating a small divot behind it. The view with Mascam Z shows a fractured facet that Perseverance may be responsible for, but the damage could have already been there, caused by natural processes like thermal cycling. Hard to be sure, just like the dent on your rental car. But the slightly darker band on what was the bottom edge likely shows how the rock was buried up to this line before being flipped. So the exposed surfaces of this rock have lightened over time, probably due to the incorporation of dust and maybe even some kind of sun bleaching process. Meanwhile, just as Perseverance was arriving on the Delta, Ingenuity completed Flight 42, scouting the terrain ahead and giving us a preview of the landscape that both will explore in coming weeks. We can be sure that they'll leave a permanent record in Mars exploration history. 